Welcome to Walking with the Word, the Bible in 365. We will be moving into Ruth, uh, chapters 1 and 2, Psalm 129 and Proverbs 30. And before we jump in today, I just wanted to encourage you um, with a story. Um, my favorite time, one of my favorite times listening to the Bible, just in the scripture, even in, in deep study, like in, in seminary and um, graduate school and all that. One of the best times I ever had with the Bible wasn't these deep word studies and all that. It was just listening to it on a mower uh, when I had a landscape business. And I remember just listening to Genesis and just being overwhelmed with who God is, the faithfulness of God, and just spending time with him in his word. It's that simple. It's that easy just to spend time, the next 10 minutes, the next 12 minutes, whatever it is, with Jesus. Just listening to his faithfulness as we look at Ruth. What an amazing story. And then worshiping him in the Psalms and then praying to have these Proverbs come alive um, within us. So that's what we're doing. We're just spending time with Jesus, understanding that this is our Father in heaven, just reading us a story, the story of his work, of his grace and his deep love for his people. So let's pray before we jump in. Heavenly Father, we just I just pray that we would meet you today in your word, that it would be something powerful in our life, that it would it would be deep truth that moves us um, to just want to be more like you, to want to spend time with you. Lord, we love spending time with you. Your words themselves, your words are pure and holy. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your words this morning. Ruth chapter one, in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a man of Bethlehem in Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons, the name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Melhon and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left there with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Oprah, and the name of the other was Ruth. They lived there about 10 years, and both Mahon and Chilion died. And the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she had heard that in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and had given them food. So she sat out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in the womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they they were grown, would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again, and Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods and returned to your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi Naomi saw that she had determined to go with her, she said no more. The two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, Is this Naomi? She said to them, Do not call me Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt very bitterly with me. I went away full, and the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has testified against me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law, with her. 
who returned from the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of a barley harvest. Now, Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of a clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean from among the ears of grain after him in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said to her, go my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come upon the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and he said to the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered, the Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, she is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came and she continued from early morning until now, except for a short rest. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter, do not go glean in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them. Have I not charged the young men to not touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? But Boaz said to her, All you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father and mother in your native land and came to a people that you did not know before. The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given to you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Then she said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant, though I am not one of your servants. And at mealtime, Boaz said to her, Come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed to her roasted grain, and she ate until she was satisfied, and she had some left over. When she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her, and also pull out some from the bundles for her, and leave it for her to glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in a field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked, and said, The man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. And Naomi said to to the daughter-in-law, may he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, the man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Ruth, the Moabite said, besides, he said to me, you shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his young women, lest in another field you be assaulted. So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvest, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Psalm 129. Greatly have they afflicted me from my youth. Let Israel now say, Greatly they have afflicted me from my youth, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. My Lord is righteous. He has cut the cords of the wicked. May all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backward. Let them be like the grass on the housetops, which withers before it grows up, with which the reaper does not fill his his hand, nor the binder of sheaves his arms, nor do those who pass by say, The blessing of the Lord be upon you. We will bless you in the name of the Lord. Proverbs 30, the words of Agar, son of Jekah, the oracle. The man declares, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God, and worn out. Surely I am too stupid to be a man. 
I have not the understanding of a man. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the Holy One who has ascended to heaven and come down, who has gathered the wind in his fist, who has wrapped up the waters in a garment, who has established all the ends of the earth. What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield of those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, lest he rebuke you and you be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Deny them not to me before I die. Remove from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me, lest I be full and deny you and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to his master, lest he curse you and you be held guilty. There are those who curse their fathers and those who do not bless their mothers. There are those who are clean in their own eyes, but are not washed of their filth. There are those, how lofty are their eyes, how high their eyelids lift. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose fangs are knives to devour the poor from off the earth, the needy from among mankind. The leech has two daughters, give and give. Three things are never satisfied. Four, never say enough. Sheol, the barren womb, the land never satisfied with water and the fire that never says enough. The eye that mocks a father and scorns to obey a mother will be picked out of the ravens of the valley and eaten by the vultures. Three things are too wonderful for me. Four, I do not understand. The way of an eagle is in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship on the high seas and the way of a man with a virgin. This is the way of an adulteress. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. Under three things, the earth trembles. Under four, it cannot bear up. A slave when he becomes a king, a fool when he is filled with food, an unloved woman when she gets a husband, a maidservant when she displaces her mistress. Four things on earth are small, but they are exceedingly wise. The ants are a people, not strong, yet they provide their food in the summer. The rock badgers are a people, not mighty, yet they make their homes in the cliffs. The locusts have no king, yet all of them march in rank. The lizard you can take in your hands, yet it is in king's palaces. Three things are stately in their tread, four are stately in their stride. The lion, which is mightiest among the beast, does not turn back before any. The strutting rooster, the he-goat, and a king whose army is with him. If you have been foolish, exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand on your mouth, for pressing milk produces curds, pressing the nose produces blood, and pressing anger produces strife.